Hey everyone, how's it going? So today we're going to build a rig, but we're not going to build any regular rig or an Octominer rig. We're going to build a proof of useful work rig. So yes, you heard that correctly. We are building a rig for proof of useful work using this special motherboard, the special case that came with it, and a few cards for the time being just for testing purposes. Since proof of useful work is coming, but it's not here yet. Let's switch down to the bench here and tell you why this one is so special. So before we get into proof of useful work with this motherboard, how about 30 seconds worth of history on why this motherboard was even made to begin with. This was originally made for 3060 mining on Ethereum when LHR was a thing. You had to use the little dummy plugs in the back for uh, HDMI. You would plug in five 3060s here. And since these are physically X16, normally most of these type of breakout boards only have a 1X electrical. This actually has 8X electrical, which was required for doing uh, full hash rate on 3060s with LHR and the dummy plug on it. So that's what's so special about this motherboard. And underneath here, it's not a Celeron CPU. Celeron CPUs only have 16 or 20 PCIe lanes. And that's definitely not enough to get eight lanes to five cards. This has a Xeon V2 2620 CPU, which has 40 PCIe lanes. So that gives eight lanes to all five slots. Now, proof of useful work, when it does come out, most of our mining rigs usually only run 1x electrically. Well, for proof of useful work, we're going to need more PCIe bandwidth. So that's why this board is also gonna serve double duty and be great in the future for proof of useful work cause each one of these slots have 8x electrical PCIe slots to it. You can see this motherboard is called the BTC79X5. This is the version one. I don't know if there's more versions or if that's just where they stopped. Uh, you have six PCIe six pin powers. The three that stick out, those are your PCIe power in. The other three that stick out are presumably for pigtails to run from here up to your GPUs to power them. You don't have to do that. We won't be doing that today. We're gonna to leave those three empty. Plus you also get one, two, three, four pin fan headers here. That goes along with the uh, specialized case that we got for this. Also, this motherboard was actually bought and given to me by Rondi. Thank you, bro. Wait. Yeah, that Rondi. Yeah. My man, Rondi. Yeah, he got this for us. We were both thinking the same thing, so he's got a second one coming in for himself as well, plus the case as well. He's doing the same build I am. So we're running a 2620 CPU on here, eight gigs of ECC 1866 DDR3 memory. And he also had this, which is great. This is motherboard comes with a MSATA connection for the hard drive, or you also have a 1X SATA over here as well. Preferably, I'd like to use the onboards just like him. And he has this MSATA to M.2 SATA adapter, which fits perfectly with these little 16 gig ones that he originally found. He gave me these a while ago. I still got a few of them sitting around here. 16 gig uh, NVMe, actually no, not NVMe, uh, M.2 SATA SSDs. Perfect for Hive OS. So that's actually gonna slot right in here. Let me get the screw taken care of real quick. And that takes care of our Hive OS operating system. Now, if you also look on the board, there is no 24 pin power connector. This is fully powered just through these three six pin inputs. So that powers the CPU plus puts the PCIe power to all five of these. So now that we have this basically set up, let's move on over to the case and take a look at that. Okay, so this case is made specifically for that motherboard and God does it scream Chinesium on it. There are sharp edges everywhere. There is not a rolled or smooth edge whatsoever, but for a hundred bucks, what do you expect? It even comes with three 120 millimeter, 38 millimeter thick server style um, exhaust fans or intake blow through fans, if, depending on which way you want to look at it. And I think these are like 5,000 RPM. 
So you see we got some venting over here because normally this takes an ATX power supply. Uh, we won't be doing that today. And then you have two plus three more slots for your motherboard or for your GPUs. And then a little cutout right here for the motherboard. Let's get the top off. So yeah, if we look inside, oh, and there is a power, momentary power button, big deal. Uh, if we look inside, it's very empty. You can see this is a slot for an ATX power supply. It can accommodate even a nice really long P2 power supplies with no problems whatsoever. Again, we're not gonna be using an ATX power supply on this build today. You got three, three pin, well, they're four pin, but there's only three wires going to them. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to uh, throttle down these fans or not and you got the one two pin momentary start and that's it a few pieces of screws and hardware and a retention bracket which i wouldn't really put on your gpus until you put some padding on it because yeah it's just metal there's no padding on the back of this so let's uh get this bar out of the way and get the motherboard installed get these wires out of the if the wires will get out of the way and just six, uh, six screw points. That lines up pretty well. Okay, that's secured quite nicely. Let's borrow Yeti's uh, 5600 XT here. And let's put this in. These screw holes aren't even threaded. You basically gotta make your threads with it. So you kinda gotta force them in. And if we look at the spacing, it's not too bad. You're definitely not gonna fit a 3090 space-wise in here. I believe these are only 60 millimeters, not 65 millimeters, like you will find in Octominers and other cases. So when it comes to powering this rig, today we're going to be using an HP style power supply with sort of an x11 breakout this is the amazon special one i need to go to parallel miner and order some more authentic breakouts but this will work for the time being i got uh pin five over here shorted with the last pin over on this uh remote connector this way the second you put power to this unit it always turns on and that's what we need in this rig but of course it's not going to slide into an atx so and let me go on over and get something off the 3d printer that might work for this and here it is with that 3D printed adapter plate fully built on. The power supply slides in from the back. The latch actually works. It actually catches on the 3D print itself. And then you take off the little handle that's normally over the fan. And you get these two little 3D printed parts that hold the power supply onto the outside case here and keeps it from falling back in. So it's actually very sturdy and just regular mounts. Unfortunately, I couldn't flip it the other way because then the latch kind of hits right here down in the metal. So it has to be positioned this way. So now here's an inside view of it. Still again, very sturdy, plenty of airflow through here. And we also have all this fins, airflow fins on the side here. Cause remember this was originally made for an ATX power supply. This would normally be your air intake and then exhaust out the back from a standard ATX power supply. So plenty of airflow on the side of this power supply as well, which helps and the breakout board has to face this direction. Still not a big deal. I got three PCIe powers connected right now up to the motherboard itself. Now I need to connect an eight pin from here and we'll get this powered on and get it tested. Okay, I've had some success so far. As you can see, the green lights on the power supply. The unit is running. It's fairly quiet right now only for the reason that I'm using uh, Noctua low power fan adapters here, which are getting really freaking hot. I would not recommend this for long term. It's good enough for testing so you guys can hear me for right now. I actually have to spin up these two fans manually because there's just not enough current to get them started. I need to get a proper manual PWM controller for these fans because they always run at 100% no matter what. So with that being said, I tried the 5600 XT in there. I've tried a Vega 56 in there, both of which work perfectly fine in Hive OS. But when I go to Hive OS, the 5600 XT just says malfunction. And this one, 
the Vega 56 doesn't show any temperatures and just gives me a bunch of X's for the BIOS that's on it. So clearly something's wrong with this motherboard with AMD. Then again, it was originally made for Nvidia carts. So with that being said, let's try, I got a 1070 Ti Aero Edition sitting here. Let's see if it works on this. Okay, much better success with the 1070 Ti Aero, that worked right out of the box. So, some things with this motherboard, it was originally designed for NVIDIA 3060s. Something with the BIOS does not allow AMD cards to work on here, at least not for me, they're not working. But, 1070 Ti, hashing on CASPA, no problems whatsoever. Uh, board works fine, if I double scape out of here, I also did an NVIDIA info, if we can see right here, it tells me PCIe Link Gen 2 and PCIe Link Width 8X. So we are getting electrical 8X out of all these slots. So it's definitely a bit of a custom build. I need to get a PWM controller for these fans to properly control them. Because I've even tried going into the motherboard BIOS. Yeah, it says it has control. There's no control. And these things are probably going to overheat in about a half an hour. These little uh, low power adapters. So I need to put it back to normal. And it gets very loud then. It's basically like an ASIC. There are three server fans running full bore. So I think I'm going to leave the build right here. Um, pretty much all we have to do is put in GPUs, PWM, close it up, we're good to go. Um, again, this case will cut you. This is not an OctoMiner, it's not very finished, it's got Chineseium written all over it, but it will work on a budget for proof of useful work. Just put uh, a bunch of 30 series cards in here, or even 20 or 10 series, it works perfectly fine when proof of useful work comes out. I know Flux is definitely getting ready to release theirs. Hopefully sometime this year. I think there's a few other projects, but I don't know off the top of my head. This is more like preparation for when that time comes. And you can still use it as a regular rig if you want to. Thanks for watching. If you have any other tips for me, maybe regarding this motherboard, getting AMD to work on it, because I can't, let me know in the comments down below. Come say hi over at Misfit Mining, and I will catch you on the next video.